Hi, welcome back to the workbench. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe down below, give it a thumbs up. What I'm taking a look at today is the Retro Entertainment Systems from RetroBit. Retro Entertainment System from RetroBit. I think this might have been their first product, or one of them anyway. It's an NES clone machine, and I'm not sure exactly what's in it, although it does look like it's another system on a chip with the familiar cheap gray cabling in there and some surface mount components on the board. You can see crystal capacitors, electrolytic and solid, and it's got two joystick ports up front, two power button and reset button, a audio and video out, uh, looks like mono audio, and a standard video signal, RCA. And DC input 7.5 volts on this unit. Let me pull the power supply and make sure that's the case. Let's see. Yes, 7.5 volts. So that's a standard voltage for the NES systems if memory serves. Let me see if I've got the right screwdriver bit on this and get this apart. And we'll see what it's got inside. I do not. I use the larger Phillips bit. There we go. Bottom's just protected by really flimsy foam pads. They they do work, but I always prefer the I always prefer the rubber pads that degrade a little less over time. But then again, this is designed as cheaply as possible. As you can see here, most expensive thing on this is probably the actual cartridge slot. Wow, that's that's interesting. That LED is just sticking out with some glue on it and wired onto the board with a bit of hot snot to hold everything in place. That is that's that's an interesting design choice right there. case itself looks like it's fairly cheap ABS plastic and there's three boards inside a mostly unpopulated board for the joysticks with extra switch components on it four of them which means that's used for something else an LED unpopulated as well a single resistor which is populated and that's pretty much it two switches hmm. That's interesting. Switch 5P, switch 5P. Yeah. It's a momentary power that's held in on off. Hmm. So these are all labeled SW5P, so I'm assuming these are all for the same actual circuit. Let's let's find out. Frequently when they make these boards, they'll make them for a variety of different applications and just populate the components necessary for whichever application they happen to be working on at the time. That looks like what they've done with the front board on here. Yeah, get those out of there. Might have to clean that up. Well, this case is pretty small and I I like the form factor on it, so this is probably going to get left in this case, unlike the Genesis that I still need to do something with. Still trying to find an interesting project for that hardware. Handheld system seems most likely, but I need to figure out the video output on that. Something suitable. And there's nothing on the back side, it's just traces, and as I had supposed, these are extra extra slots for the pins for both the LED and the and the switches so you can populate it with switches in different points now normally the reason you wouldn't do that is because it costs extra money to make the larger circuit board but probably not too much and this is probably the cheapest circuit board available forget which one it is, but the brown board 
generally isn't expensive when you purchase it on the open market for small quantities for project use, so I would assume it's probably also the cheapest in industry to get in quantity. Ah, the torque on this thing is awful. Someday, someday I'll buy a better screwdriver. Let's see what's under the cartridge slot. Any day. All right. Nope, and I think we're gonna have to take off the nope, the smaller screws, so we'll go with the smaller bit for that. Looks like these are so closely intertwined I can't take one off without unscrewing the other. And this cable's looped under there. That cabling is really problematic. It it does not like staying in place. Also, this could probably be replaced because that's a huge huge run of cable that doesn't actually do much. So replacing this with a little jumper of possibly better gauge and shielding might improve things a bit with the output quality on it. Although, I, I'm not sure how much you're going to get out of this. None of these components look like there's any problem with them. They do look pretty cheap. Let me see if we can figure out what those capacitors are. Jing. I'm not going to shift that back. Hopefully I didn't break any of the solder off it up. And there's our logic chip. It's a system on chip. Probably a NES. I forget exactly what those are. They're, they're N something. NF something. They're a Chinese clone chip. I'll insert the name down here. Figure out what it is. And that's it. And this is the support circuitry for that. Production date of 2015, 0108, and the board designation is ZB462, right here. I'll get some close-up pictures of this up so that you can see what it is. Oh, so the board production date on this one, the breakout board, is 2006 913. So this is a much older part. That's interesting. There isn't too much interesting about it. It's just got Opponent's diode capacitor. And that's about it. As lightly populated as possible. That might be for an LED. An unpopulated capacitor. Probably some voltage smoothing they decided to forego. So, also, these these components might clean up some of the signal, too, for the audio output and the video output. It was a little crackly on the video. I'll show you that in a minute. And that's probably why they decided to forego a lot of the extra componentry that had originally been on here. Because they decided that it was cheaper not to put it on there, obviously. And they can get away with it. That's that's usually how the cost cutting works in these things. Either that or it was for a different design that it wasn't necessary for in this one, but seeing as how it's just on the output board, it doesn't seem like there would be much else going on there aside from filtration and signal cleanup, so I'm guessing that's a pure cost saving measure. I might try to repopulate that board with some components and see if it improves the quality on the sound and the video output. But for now, let me show you how this works. And it does work. I think it's actually quicker to manually put these in with a screwdriver than it is to use the, use the screwdriver function, unfortunately. Remember to put buttons back in. That's not a bad design. Buttons sit in the 
on top of those switches, which are standard switch design. These just have the circular holes in them that sit around the outside of that. And it works pretty well. Yeah, those are, those are fairly functional, really. You don't always get even that, that nice a design on some of these things, so. All of the circuit board and circuitry is, looks a little junky. At least the actual case design and the electronics on it look, well, the case design and the electrical connections looked okay. Being five years old now, it looks like the circuit boards are starting to deteriorate, flake a little bit. I noticed some of the some of the masking was off on some of those boards, but it'll probably still work okay. Let's fire her up. The controllers for this are fairly awful looking. That's that's about as bad as it gets, but we'll see. They should work and you could always plug in a standard NES controller to it too. It is actually an NES emulating system so and here we have Dragon Warrior. That would help if I plug the power in. Oh my I might have found a cart that doesn't work. cart. Alright, same result. So far so good. Insert the cart again. Still nothing. Well, I also have a Super Games 151. Let's see if that works. Oh, interesting. So the, the multi-cart worked, but the original Dragon Warrior cartridge didn't. Yeah. Russian attack. So this seems to work okay. Although interesting that it didn't work with the Dragon Warrior cartridge. Let me see if I can clean this quick. Yeah, so that cartridge is fairly filthy. So it looks clean. Let's try that again. Dice. Now, oh, yeah, it is just the way it's sitting in there. And what about the audio? I'm playing on some Logitech speakers back here with just a 3.5 to uh, RCA adapter. That sounds pretty good. Set that again. Not a whole lot of hiss or crackle in the quiet spots and it does seem to be working pretty well. And that's it. it. Seems to work pretty well. No complaints about the actual system. Video seems okay now that I've got it hooked up to some real speakers in the uh, display and the uh, and the display and Output quality on it seem okay in that respect. Let me get some close-up shots of what's in here, and I'll put them up on the website. So if you want to check out any of the circuitry in a little more detail for some reason, you can certainly do that. I'll also go back and put in the model 
of the chip I'm assuming this is, although I could be wrong, it's just under an epoxy blob. So that's all there is on there. It's one system on chip, nothing else in there, no supporting hardware. Next, I'll probably be taking a look at the 151 in game cart, one game cart, because it's got some weird internals on there. So check that out next time, man. Thanks for watching. See you next time.